You're listening to America's Off-Road Podcast. Brought to you by Off-Road Power Products. Fueled by enthusiasm, a passion for the outdoors, and a spirit of adventure, we drive the industry we love. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of America's Off-Road Podcast. Brought to you by Off-Road Power Products. Uh, did we, uh, I said that right. America's Off-Road Podcast, just checking sure. I don't have Cooper here to correct me all the time. Normally he makes fun of my intro. So Cooper's gone. He's off wheeling. He's having fun. He's in Moab doing full-size invasion in Easter Jeep, um, which is super cool. So we'll have some episodes coming up on that. But now that I think about it in podcast years, by the time we sit down and record with Cooper and then this one airs, it's going to be backwards. Yeah, probably. So that was silly of me to say. But uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, you can listen to us. If you're on YouTube, you can also listen to us on other stations like iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, SoundCloud. Anywhere you like to listen to your podcast, make sure you search Off-Road America's Off-Road Podcast and put us in your playlist there uh, so you don't miss out on any episodes. We've got some exciting ones coming up. we got some new visitors coming. Um, we got a whole bunch of cool, fun stuff in the works. Also, we're asking you guys to uh, reach out and shoot us some episode ideas. Um, you can email like us a, at podcast at offroadpowerproducts.com. Um, whether it's a question on a previous episode you may have watched, or if you just want to know more information about something specific, if you've missed any of them, we've gone over UA axles. You know, what's a, a worthy UA axle, how to choose your first winch or how is a winch, how to choose a winch for the vehicle you're currently driving. So, um, we love answering your guys' questions and we'll do a whole episode on it. So make sure you reach out there. And lastly, um, every listener, every download, every review is a huge help for us. This is completely organic. We're doing it because we enjoy talking about the industry. And this is definitely something that we are enthusiasts of. We are not salesmen, so we are out doing this all the time. So we enjoy doing it. So when you guys do leave a review or download, it goes a long way for us. So we appreciate that. We're doing it because there's a lack of knowledge sometimes in specific areas. Right. You know? Right. And we field a lot of questions so it's fun to answer more than one person yeah and it's it, it almost becomes enjoyable like talking to people for your job on the phone when people call and they're like hey i've got you know this toyota tacoma and i want to do lockers and 35s how do i make it happen like all right cool let's talk man like i was just saying podcast Oh, but I mean, I like that too, too, you know? Yeah. I mean, there's I'm a, there's a wealth of information out there. Um, and with the industry changing so much and, um, you know, every year something new is coming out, whether it's a new vehicle or new, new products that have been innovated. Um, there's really no lack of subjects to talk about. So we enjoy doing it. Um, speaking of just talking, yeah, we're going over today. We're going to talk about something that is talking apparently brought up a lot in my household which is communication i don't know what she's talking about but we're going to talk a little bit about communication never heard of it um not only from vehicle to vehicle applications but just communication in general and its importance um when you are on a trip whether it's a a wheeling trip a quick side-by-side trip or if you're out in the field camping um at the end of the day when we plan our trips um there's a lot of communication that goes involved um from start to finish where we are in the vehicle to the second we get to camp to the second everyone puts their heads on their pillows um there there's a lot of communication involved in that and i don't mean just chit-chatting um i mean um planning i mean planning everything um so how we're going to do this episode it's going to be kind of like one of our trips you know we're going to talk about communication uh, vehicle to vehicle. We're going to talk about communication on specifically side by sides and then kind of what we do um, when we get to camp and the important things that we like to relay to everyone involved. So starting with vehicles, it's a big one and yeah. it's, it's pretty important too. So from the important aspect, before we dive into the products that we like to use um, and how we use them and what, what's available for you, um, the importance of communication for me, and I'm sure you've got tons of stories too, is um, the number one thing for me is knowing where everybody is at at any given time. Um, We're a little bit different just because we bring camera crews a lot, but even if they weren't there, um, if you don't know where somebody is at all times, that's that, I mean, it kind of changes the whole flow of, of what's going on. Different dynamic. Yeah. I mean, do you wait for the person? Do you go out and try and find them? So, 
Um, pretty it's important. Safe, safety issue, too. Totally. I mean, a lot of the, safety you, first, you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's not true, but yeah. Uh, you brought up camera, tr- camera, camera, Cameron, and camera, camera crew. Camera. Right. Uh, that crew itself, I mean, just that, that alone communication in our situation mm. is so important because getting the right shots for you guys to enjoy or right. even the safety side of it where we don't have two vehicles coming around the same corner at the same time. Mm-hmm. I mean, the communication side of off-road in general is uh, it's like an onion, yeah, man. How terrible. many layers do you want to talk about? It's the communication prior to the planning, the communication during planning, uh, the communication to the trailhead, yep. uh, during, <clears throat> on the trail, the everything, man. And it, it's almost, uh, I mean, it, if you have a lot of communication, there's almost like a, a pretty big risk of liability. Um, and just because, I mean, e- even if you're not like us and you're, you want to load up with all your buddies and you want to go out wheeling for the weekend, if nobody's talking to each other, like somebody's going to be held liable for something that goes wrong, whether it be financially or just emotionally, you're going to feel liable that you didn't, you know, communicate well. So what we like to do in, in all of our rigs, um, they're all equipped with a rugged radios. Um, whether it be a handheld or some other vehicle stuff that that we'll dive into. Um, But the first thing that we check before we leave the building is making sure that every vehicle either has a radio installed in it or has a handheld radio with a battery and a backup battery that is fully charged. Um, So when when you are hitting the road, um, we turn them on immediately. <clears throat> Everybody does a radio check. We make sure that all the vehicles have their radios on before we start rolling. Um, not rolling by camera, but wheels rolling. Yeah. Um, everybody gets a radio check, so that way we're all on the same page. And the second we leave the parking lot, it's pretty much chitter-chatter. And I think probably one of the most amazing examples of vehicle communication that I've personally been a part of was Ultimate Adventure. Um, I know you didn't have a chance to get on that, but it's the exact same thing from the second the cars turn on to the second you get to your destination it is non-stop radio communication as far either where you're turning if somebody has a vehicle issue if somebody needs to stop for any reason um it, it's just absolutely really well thought out and the communication is top notch really goes like this when you really break it down shy of off-road think about all the other uses of communication when it comes to radio communications or cellular or whatnot i mean look at every other convoy of anything from trucking to train to cargo ships to everything they have some form of of communicating with one another so that everything goes with the flow and everybody knows what's going on so yeah and i think rugged radios has really um done a great job providing a ton of solutions Mm -hmm. um for anybody to big massive companies or fleets of vehicles that you're wanting to install radios on down to you and your friends um yeah <clears throat> everything from simple um gm style radios gmrs radios which are just a simple two-way family band radio uh to dual band vhf uhf um all the way down to full-on car radio systems that are 50, 60, 70 plus. Uh, I want to say 60 is going to be the max. 60 watt radio application where you can get in a uh, a, uh, a, t- a dual band, right, and get a little bit more distance from vehicle to vehicle. Uh, they really, what I like about rugged radios is they've really. I consider them more of an accessory manufacturer Sure. where they've put together or took all the guesswork out for the end user and made it really easy to buy a package or a system that just simply works and you don't have to do a, you know, a guessing game because there is tons of manufacturers out there that make radio. Um, I mean, Yesu, Baofeng or Bofeng, um, you got Motorola, um, Carmen. Like, yeah, I mean, you got all these radio Stunned. manufacturers, but most of them are very, very com- complex and complicated to where the end user has to buy a radio and he's got to buy a battery and then he's got to get FCC licensing and ham radio course. Right. And he's got to do this and that and this. And Rugged's made it really easy where you can buy at least a handheld or a car radio to make communication really easy and then going a step further, including accessories to make 
that system work better. So on a side oh, by yeah. side, having <clears throat> headsets, having a headset to communicate from driver to co-driver, driver and co-dog yep. or other machines in the convoy. So And they, really they even make those, there's a lot of people that are using those headsets and their rigs, you know, the, the Jeep guys that are running or have a purpose built Jeep that doesn't have doors and it's just an XO cage and it's got some LS with a straight pipe on it. That's loud as can be. Totally. <clears throat> they make these super awesome kits that it's essentially kind of like headphones like we're wearing here that has a microphone. Um, and the cool thing with those is like Ash said, as you talk, you can communicate with your co-driver and they can communicate back to you openly. And then they have a button that you install. Some do it on their steering wheels. Some do it on, you know, all you can, you can it mount it locations. wherever you want. Um, as soon as you push that button, it's going out to whatever frequency you're on. So mm -hmm. the cool thing with rugged is they are programmable. So, um, you can create your own essentially internal station, name mm -hmm. it what you want. Um, and then everybody can be on that. So you're not on some frequency that everybody's on. If you're in a really public area, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the, the, the different applications and the different products that they have to allow you to communicate between you, your co-dog, and along with the other vehicles are awesome. Yeah, yeah you're talking about just a PTT button, just a push yeah. to talk button there. And they, they have some on headsets. They have some available for machines that have handlebars. They have a push to talk button yep. on the handlebar. Uh, you can put them on the steering wheel. There's even some that, I mean, we've even ran them on some of like our shifters and stuff on our side by sides. Yeah. You have your, your hand sitting on the shifter. Yep. Uh, so there's really good options there, but um, they take it a step further there and you can even run Bluetooth module through them. Like what we have in, we had in one of our X3s, we might have them in both, um, where you can actually run music through them. So That's it eliminates. So, I totally forgot about freaking that. Freaking love it. It's so cool. The first time I had an experience with that <clears> was <throat> when we went to San Hollow. Yeah. And Brian's um, X3 had it. And I hooked up my phone and I was bumping tunes, but trail still. Hero. Trail Hero. What yeah, did yeah. I say? You, it was San Hollow. I was trying to remember the event. Oh, it was right. Trail Hero. Yeah. I thought I said Sand Hero. <laughs> Sand, <laughs> you might have. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? But having the ability to play music through your, your oh. headset while communicating. It's dude, killer. Awesome. And, and it cuts out like perfectly for you. So if somebody's trying to talk to you, cuts out the music. You want to talk to somebody else, cuts out the music. Right. It so is they, awesome. They make some really, really cool accessories. And again, there's a, it seems to be a common thing in the industry that everybody argues about rugged radios, but you got to give it to them. They've been one of the only companies to successfully build all the accessories and incorporate full on car radio kits or handheld kits that take all the guesswork out of it right. for the end user. Uh, as a, an example, um, even side by side applications like we just kind of touched on, they'll have a full kit that includes a radio, wiring, mount kit, headsets, even mounts that are machine specific to put it in the rig with the right wiring and lengths and harnesses. It's just it's just a killer package. Um, without a doubt, there's cheaper packages out there, but you get what you pay for and you, you get a complete package when you go with their product. So we're a big fan of that. Yeah. And <clears throat> even for those that don't want to go full on car radio, um, the handhelds even, work great. Yeah. You're going to get limited range. Sure. And I know that's going to be a question on this is range when you're running a dual band radio, um, ultra high fre frequency or very high frequency VHF, your average, it's, it's a line to sight thing. So if you're in a perfect condition where you can see, I mean, you're on a desert floor and you can see 10 miles, you can totally communicate 10 miles, but in general situations, you're going to get probably about a mile to two to three miles at best, especially in a mountainous area. Mm -hmm. It's really, is, it's the biggest issue is it's, it's a line of sight radio. So it doesn't actually go up. It goes to the opposite antenna. So you got to have a good line of sight and the higher wattage or power of that radio, the better it's going to be able to transmit. So usually like our car radios work way better because they're 60 watt compared to a five watt handheld. Sure. Um, unless of, of course you're incorporating repeaters and things like that, but these are going to be preset to channels to where you and the end user or you and the other, you know, driver or friend in another rig or whatever it may be, you're all on the same channel rather than using repeaters. So it, it, it makes it really, again, simple for the end user to buy and another question is going to be are these better than cb citizen band radios yes <laughs> um, give you far more frequency um, much different wavelength as far as what they're capable of um, they're going to be able to punch out quite a bit further uh, there's far more simple um, and like you said the handhelds work that's what i run yeah um, <clears throat> i plan on doing a, a car radio 
um, a fixed radio in my rig at one point. I'd really like to do that. And then I'm going to basically program my handhelds off of that. So, mm -hmm. um, we'll touch on that in a little bit, but I want to do that. But for now I've been running a handheld and it works great as long as your crew is within a couple miles of one another. Right. And the, the kits that you mentioned too, for the UTVs being vehicle specific kits, they, they're really clean and it looks like it came that way from the factory. Um, yeah. which is what we have in our X3s, like you mentioned. And, uh, now we've got them in our YXCs. They just make an awesome kit. Um, but the other cool thing, um, from a side by side standpoint is a lot of people are running helmets, you know, safety first. Um, you know, that's what we've got on all of our side by sides with SMB particle separators in there. So it's pressurizing your helmet with nice, fresh, clean air. It's loud, it's noisy. Um, but these, the helmets that they have, um, through rugged that have the built in communication mm -hmm. in the actual helmet is awesome awesome or you can get the helmet kits as well which is, yeah it's pretty cool it just comes with a couple small little ear muff looking they're tiny they just go in right where your ears would be on inside the helmet by the cheek pad uh, and they actually work really well i've had my experience with those on the motorcycle side for mm -hmm. communication from motorcycle to motorcycle and they work actually pretty dang well so if you good point if you are wearing a helmet right um there's kits available there's there's totally kits available and and the nice thing is is a lot of these use the same connection so if you're the one that you have maybe a wife or a kid that you want them to wear a helmet, maybe you're the guy that doesn't want to wear a helmet, you can run both. You yeah. have the option to, to really choose whichever which way you want to go. You could run a helmet, you could run a headset, you could run an earbud. I mean, they all use kind of generic couplers that they've put together accessory kits for. Right. Um, so back to kind of we got a little roundabout there with going from the importance of it to products, but R rugged has been our go-to. Um, but communication <clears throat> from a trail perspective, it, it, it sounds silly, but it really makes the trip a lot easier for everyone involved. And, um, you know, for example, this last trip I went on with Cooper, um, we both had radios, they were both on, but it was just two of us. So we, there wasn't much talking involved at ever, but a lot of times we would go around a corner I would get high sided in the Raptor because the snow and I'm just stuck and Cooper's going along like nothing ever happened. Didn't look in his rear view. And there was one time where I actually did not radio Cooper. And finally he looked back and didn't see me. And he's like, where are you at? I was like, dude, I'm stuck. I'm trying to dig myself out. And he was like a mile up the road yeah. in like six feet of snow. So then he had to back down. It <laughs> took him a little while, but not too long, but so we can go into the importance of trail communication. Oh man, it's um, it's so important. Yeah, it, it, one you know, there's so many things that come to mind just from many many years of being on the trail myself. Not only for the safety side and, and just communication, like you said, getting a vehicle stuck or unstuck, mm -hmm. but even simple navigation. For prime example, an easy one is um, mapping. Yeah, you, totally. You have two machines or two rigs whether it be you know your jeep your truck or your side by side or motorcycle and you want to separate some distance from one another that safety side of it is so good where you could be able to not be eating dust or dirt and yeah. have somebody just a tad bit further behind you know maybe he's running a quarter mile behind you and you can say left at this y yeah boom you don't have to have somebody stop and then eat their dust for the next mile before you get the distance and then stop it makes that really good. And then on the safety side, just being able to communicate, hey, I coming up, you have a, you know, you have a white Chevy Tahoe coming down the road and you can be prepared that within the next few turns, you're going to run into a white Chevy Tahoe. Right. I don't know why I used a white Chevy Tahoe, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe it was a logging truck. Do you, do you have a bad experience with a I white actually, Chevy Tahoe? <laughs> I do. That's probably why. Um, and, and it's also great too, uh, you know, oncoming traffic, um, but... <clears throat> for me personally, it was, um, when I was learning how to, you know, I'm more of a, a backwoods overlanding kind of background, right? Spent a lot of time driving just pretty basic roads. And I remember the first time I went to Moab, um, it was huge having a spotter that had a radio that could actually tell me, Hey, no, go a little bit more passenger go instead of using hand signals or stuff like that. Um, Dude's yelling at you and you yeah, can hear him. Yeah, I mean, you have one person that you're focused on that's spotting you that has a radio and he's talking. He's not screaming or hand signals. I mean, it's a good point. 
everybody's got different hand signals. I mean, yeah. no one has the exact same. I know there's universal hand signals out there. And you have the guy that's telling you to go left, but your left is different yeah, than yeah. his left. And, yeah. <laughs> so when you have the radio communication and that capability to, if you're on a tough obstacle or you just have an inexperienced driver wheeling for the first time and you can be very precise and say, nope, little bit driver, little bit passenger, stop, back up, go, bump it, yeah. um, makes the experience even a lot more enjoyable so communication it's key vehicles side by sides the 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 side by side thing um one of the reasons i wanted to touch on communication with side by sides is because i feel like it's a whole nother level of communication from the safety aspect of i feel like everything we do on side by sides is like times 10 Right. It's just the speed, I think. Totally. That's, what, like, I, that's uh, what I mean. It's like when I think like we're going on a trail run in our Jeeps and our trucks, like, yeah, we're tr- pretty casual on a logging road at 20 miles an hour. Right. And things are pretty casual it's and a there's a truck in the world. road and you tell them, hey, there's a truck coming down and things are good. Then you're in a side by side doing like 85, 90 through the desert and changes things a bit. Changes things a lot. Yeah. So communication there is awesome. Um, especially like just from recovery points. Um, like the first thing that pops into my head with the side by side is when I took my first dirt nap at the same event, San Hollow at Trail Hero. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it was nice just to feel like immediately Cooper's on the radio, like, "Hey, are you okay?" Yeah, I'm okay. And then it immediately de-escalates the situation to be able to go, "Okay, the driver's fine. Let's focus on recovery." And no one is wondering if like anybody's seriously hurt. So, um, having communication readily available in all the vehicles is absolutely of the utmost importance for us. Um, but to take that even a step further, um, it's also just as important for us from a camping aspect. Um, as soon as we get to the camp, there's a lot of things. Um, and obviously radio, we're not talking on radios with camp, but I think there's a few things that we can touch on, um, that we kind of do internally that I think might make your camping experience a little bit better. Obviously, number one, let people know where you're going. It's kind of a, a big thing. You see, you hear so many stories about people that were, you know, lost in the woods for 14 days before somebody found them or seven days. And um doesn't matter if you're hiking, you're on a dirt bike, you're in a truck, a Jeep, side by side. Let people know your final destination or just the general, like, five-mile radius area yeah. of where you plan on stopping. I always feel like those are, like, a complete horror movie. Like, they always do what you wouldn't do. You know, yeah. like when you're watching the horror movie and you're like, why would you go in that room? Like, <laughs> it's a dead end. Right. And then you hear the stories of the guys getting lost and they like, they got stuck here and then they decided to walk 14 miles in the wrong direction and totally. then up the snow hill to get stuck <laughs> and break yes. their leg. And you're like, oh my God, what are you doing? There's that, and it all that? like I shouldn't be alive, that little series that they have. And it's almost like every person too is like, I got to the trailhead and then. I just decided to leave my cell phone in the car. It's like, no, take the cell phone. Like, you don't know what's going to happen. How are you doing over there? I figured it out. You got seat malfunctions for those of you that aren't watching. (laughs) I got it it figured out. You got it. Okay, good. (laughs) Yes, communication. Uh, Let people know where you're going, even if it's a general area. Like, I'm a huge motorcycle rider, off-road and motocross and even adventure bike. Most recently, just really been heavy in the, the enduro side. And every time I go out, I always let my wife know exactly where I'm going, right. where the truck's going to be parked, and who I'm going out with. Exactly. That's just a you know, basic rule of thumb. Hey, I'm going to this mountain today. We're going to ride this area. And uh, if I don't text back from this time, then you should be concerned. Yeah, the whole, um, uh, I don't know the acronym for it, but somebody came up with a really cool acronym, like the such and such time. And it's like, if I'm not back by this day or by this hour, get help yeah like i can a, see that yeah it, which is a great thing especially if you're doing a, like a multi-day trip where you know like i have to be back by sunday because i have to show up to work monday like let let people that you know hey if, if you don't hear from me by monday morning something happened and you need to come to this location and figure out why i'm either not there or missing um <clears throat> but even from a group aspect obviously we do a lot of group activities um, you know, we go to Priest Lake and, get, and do a bunch of riding up there and camping up there. And um, there's a couple things I think that are, are important to mention too, especially when you have a big group of people is letting <clears throat> people know like 
especially if you're going to leave the group and go on a hike or something like here's here's where my keys are for my truck so if there's an emergency yeah. and if it's the only vehicle there you know exactly where the keys are so you can get in the truck and get to help as fast as you can that's a big 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 one for motorcycling on my side right um, especially when you're riding like we take one truck mm -hmm. and i usually store the keys you if i'm wearing like a fanny pack or a backpack i'll throw the keys on me but a lot of times we don't ju I just don't have anything so I'll leave them somewhere on the vehicle itself and letting sure. the, the other rider with me know exactly where that's at in case if I do have an injury which it's I mean it's going to happen it's part of riding motorcycles you're going to get hurt so letting the other person know I mean that great example where your keys are yeah is is a big thing because um, you may not be around at all if something happens and somebody somebody needs help so yeah. um <clears throat> there's so many things there I mean there's um, shameless plug on X off road. We usually, when we go on group trips, we might ping a location on Which the map that we can awesome. share. Um, and sometimes the logistics are a bit hard for us as a company because we have employees that are going to be getting off at different hours of the day or somebody can't right. make it up until this day. So being able to ping a camp location and even going, this is camp a, B, C, and we're going to start with A. If all else fails, we'll move down the line. Mm -hmm. And sharing those locations, communication right there, so that when the other, um, you know, employees come up, we know where the group's going to be. Um, that's a that's a big one right there. And I even run on my my cell, uh, which most of the time I'm out of service, but at least it, I think it's a big help. Um, I run a, a GPS app between me and my wife and a couple close friends mm -hmm. that we can see where each other are at at all times. Right. And I've noticed even just trail riding, it's usually pretty accurate and it will ping where I was last at oh. when I get service. So she can kind of get an idea of the location or my good close friends. Or the direction get, you're going. Yeah, like, okay, we saw you got on this trailhead, you had service here, and then the next ping was at this trailhead. We can at least, like, we can, we can kind of pinpoint where you are headed and, and maybe if something doesn't happen and you never get another ping, you can get a rough idea where that person might be. Right. So the other, the other cool thing on that too, with Onyx off road, especially is you can pre download your maps, right? So if you, if you know the area that you're going to, you can download it ahead of time, especially if you know you're going to be out of cell service mm -hmm. and then you can share that, you know, if you can send that location to, your wife, your friend, this is where I'm going to be, this is where I'm at, <clears throat> which is really cool. And then you also have, if you do get into a sticky situation and you are solo, you've got a, a map that you can reference. Yeah, those are which pretty, pretty important, you know? It's kind of cool. You can yeah. know where you're going. Um, there's just so many little things, too. One, you know, and this is applicable to some people, not applicable to all people, but um, we obviously live in an area where predators are prominent especially up in the uh, northern idaho area where we like to do a lot of our riding there's a ton of grizzly bear sightings up there um it seems like almost every other year there's a actual grizzly attack yeah um that happens so we tend to bring our own personal firearms or have our own personal protection and letting people know where that is i think for me personally is um a pretty good thing to know um one for so if if somebody does get into a situation where that person's not there you can use that if you need to yeah. or also just letting people be aware like hey this is what i have this is where it's at um you know i mean cooper does a great job of that anytime where we go on trips together he's like hey, you know i've got this weapon it's right here um so i communicating that to me is is pretty important in, in certain situations obviously it's not applicable to all of them but right um we get into some pretty deep woods and there's some pretty crazy animals so you never know yeah so in, in summary there communication prior planning to your trip you know let people know where you're going that one should go without saying i mean that's like 101 of getting out there <laughs> it's kind of especially an obvious, if you're yeah. getting in an area you know you're not going to have service and stuff like that at least at least let somebody know <laughs> where where you're heading um, having good communication on the trail is extremely important, especially when you're in a group bigger than two, being able to communicate not only for safety reasons, but for, uh, navigational reasons. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Um, there's a ton of great options out there. Like we've discussed handhelds to full on radios mounted in vehicles. Um, you know, communicating within your friends, what to do in case of emergencies. Um, and, and even taking it a step further, um, you know, communication devices for those 
rather than being two way from one person to the next, but being able to greet, get like SMS out and emergency right. services. <clears throat> um, I've had my experiences where we could have really used service in bad, bad situations and something yeah. like Garmin in reaches and things like that. Uh, if you're that guy or girl that gets out there in those situations where something bad could really happen, it may be worth the investment, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's even though cell service is still sketchy in a ton of areas, the Garmin inReach, I mean, you can be anywhere in the world, essentially, Yeah. and send out an emergency SMS. So yeah, There's some um, cool options coming down the pipeline for having alternative forms of communication. <clears throat> if right. it's not just, you know, ham radio or some f- sort of radio frequency, but getting, uh, you know, SMS or mobile, um, and then even just the basics, having map navigation and communicating with others where you're going to be. Yep. And if you guys are looking for a good solution for that, for your vehicles or your trucks, Jeeps, rigs, off-road machinery, um, reach out to us, offroadpowerproducts.com. We've got, we definitely have a rugged radio set up that would uh, work for you. They've got a gigantic catalog. Um, so it's pretty rare that you don't find anything that yeah. would work. And um, we carry Onyx Off-Road on our website. Onyx too. Off-Road, yep, We try to available. cover some of those bases of, of the you know, getting out there. Mm-hmm. And, and that's not because we're trying, you know, I mean, obviously we're a company, we're looking to make a profit, but all these products that we promote and we talk about is because we have personal use or we were out and said, hey, we, we need to figure out a solution for this. Yeah. The Onyx off-road one has been like a game changer for us. That's been like a big one that we've been using recently. Yeah. Um, so, and yeah, the cool thing with that, if you do come check us out and you visit Off-Road Power Products and you want to buy the Onyx off-road, um, we can either send you the code in the mail or we can get you the code instantaneously. So if you call us on the phone, you say you want to order it, you can get that code right away and it's boom, active on your phone. Um, so it's a really cool thing. They also, um, that same app on your phone, you can access via desktop, um, which is really cool. So, which I use. Yeah. I put it on my laptop and I'd much rather have the full size screen than my, my cell phone. I get all my maps. Yeah. <laughs> put all my planning and waypoints and stuff like that oh, on yeah. there. It's a lot easier to do on a bigger screen yeah, like that totally. than it is your phone. Totally. <clears throat> so thanks for tuning in, everybody. Um, we've got more exciting stuff in the pipeline, like I said, so make sure you stay tuned. Um, leave us a review. Shoot us an email, podcast at offroadpowerproducts.com with any questions or episode suggestions, and we'd love to cover a topic for you. Um, yeah, we'll see you guys next right. time. Thanks for coming. <laughs>